Here's a good story. Wealthy entrepreneur Alan Gibbs decides to build an amphibious car. Not the usual painfully slow five mile an hour bobbing around thing, but one that'll do 30 in the water and 100 on the road. After tens of millions of pounds worth of investment and seven years' work, he comes up with this, the Gibbs Aquada. It costs £150,000, and Richard Branson has just bought one. The engineers, based in landlocked Nuneaton, had to conquer lots of conflicts. For starters, a car is heavy and a fast boat needs to be light. Having the nose up on a boat is a good thing because it planes across the water, but the nose up on a car is bad as it could flip over. Now, you don't often drive a car at top speed, whereas with a boat, it's at full throttle most of the time. And you cool a car's engine by having cold air rushing through the grill. Holes in a boat is not a good idea. Just think Titanic. The challenges went on and on. Propellers are illegal for the road, hence the Aquada's jet. There are even different rules about the width of wiring you can use and the type of lighting. Marine laws stipulate a green light for starboard, a red one for port, and a white one on a mast for nighttime. Loads of worry and work later, the Gibbs engineers reckon they've cracked all the problems completely. It uses a 2.5-litre V6, the same that you'd find in a Land Rover Freelander, and it either sends 175 horsepower to the rear wheels or it chucks out a tonne of thrust from a jet. <gasps> a tonne of thrust! <laughs> Show me the key. Q-U-A-Y. Time to get wet. I'm in drive. I press this little button for more than three seconds, but no more than ten. A buzzer starts beeping, and basically it's turning the car into a boat. So all the lights, all the mechanical bits and bobs are being turned into a boat, and I'm going into the water. So I can't use more than 2,000 revs until that noise goes off. Then I can use 3,000 RPM until a flashing light goes solid. It's so clever. It just does everything automatically. That's it. It's now a proper boat with jets and everything. Because it's still got all the sort of bits that a car's got, it is really easy. Stick my foot hard down on the throttle and steer. Basically, that's about it. It's incredibly agile. If it gets a bit cheeky on the rear end, then a little bit of opposite lock will just sort of counteract it all. Oh, it's choppy. <sighs> when your fun's over, you just scuttle on back to shore. Take your foot completely off the throttle. Press the button again for a little over three seconds. Okay, so the buzzer's going. I can feel the, the wheels coming down, sort of aiming for the ramp a bit, a little bit more throttle. Oh, <gasps> phew, terra firma, bingo. Time to swap the ocean wave for the open road. As a car, I thought it would handle more like a barge, but the Aquada is surprisingly sporty. I really like the centre driving position, it's sort of McLaren F1 styly, and the hot rod sound of that engine. Most comforting of all, though, is the safety feature, which prevents the tyres from raising when you're on the road. Can you imagine how embarrassing that would be if, you, if it did it at a set of traffic lights? Despite that hefty 150 grand price tag, Gibbs reckon they'll shift 200 Aquadas this year. But they hope amphibious cars won't remain exclusive forever. With 170 patents, Gibbs claim to have the amphibious kingdom sewn up and are looking to earn big bucks from licensing the technology. The emergency services and military are obvious clients, and the boat bits could also be adapted to any car or even a lorry. So imagine, next time you buy a new motor, you might not just be choosing metallic paint and a digital radio, you could be ticking the amphibious option too. 